Okay, good morning, everyone. This is the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for October 24th, 2020. The time is now 9.07 a.m. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. We are still doing these meetings telepresence uh, via Zoom because of the COVID-19 situation that exists and uh, in relation to Governor Wolf's state of emergency at stay in home orders. So normally the first item is the Pledge of Allegiance due to the telepresence nature of these meetings, we are going to skip that. Uh, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Sue, did we receive any via email or phone this week? There were no emails. I just checked before the meeting and there were no phone calls, nothing. Okay, very good. Seeing as Dan is the, the only resident that's on, Dan, do you have any public comments or concerns that you'd like to raise? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay, first item is the emergency declaration. This was made back at the March meeting uh, with the provision to extend until a period lasting uh, until we decide to, to remove it. There was, uh, it was signed in on April 1st uh, and on August 31st, Governor Wolf extended the COVID-19 emergency order for another 90 days. Um, I won't get into, into it too much, but uh, my I'm sure you're very familiar with this, but we've actually countrywide seen COVID cases start to trend upwards again. Um, which is not good, not promising. So we'll have to closely monitor what the emergency declaration situation is because that's what allows us to do meetings via telepresence rather than getting in into the office or requiring that we be in the office to do it. Okay. Next up is the handicapped parking space for 120 Main Street. Uh, we did receive an application and uh, based on really just the, the general principle of this sort of thing, it needs board approval. So. I got a chance to look at it. It's been in, in queue essentially for a little more than I'd say like a week and a half or so, two weeks. Um, I don't have any objection to doing this. We can go out and per Andy, we can place the sign. We actually have one that we can, we can move that is not currently being used. Um, was in use previously. The resident that had originally asked for it has moved. So we can relocate that sign and paint the curb in accordance with the request at 120 Main. Jim, uh, I see you talking, but I don't hear you. Yeah, I'd make a motion to approve. Okay, I'll second that motion. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yeah, Jim, uh, I guess just as FYI, I think the general thought was um, down the road again, you know, we're currently on the board. We want to make this a, a fair democratic process. So I think having it as board approval rather than individual supervisor approval would be the prudent thing to do. This way, you know, down the road, you don't have one particular supervisor that's issuing these um, uh, spaces. I mean, the need is there and the ordinance is there, um, but at the same time, you just want to continue to make it as democratic as possible. Agreed. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm completely on board with that. Don't want to don't want to create any any bottlenecks or, or situations where favoritism would or uh, yeah. special treatment would be easily occurring. All right. So there was a motion. I'll do roll call. Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Irene. Aye. <clears throat> okay. I'll let him know. Okay. Very good. Uh, we'll get the road crew together so and somebody needs to sign that form. I'll... I'll pop in and sign it. Or okay. Irene, if you get in there before me, which you probably will, feel free to sign it. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the website. Uh, we have been working with Civic CMS about getting content on the website. Uh, Sue, you've been an immense help on that. I've been putting stuff up on the Google Drive for anything that I have uh, for them. Uh, it looks like it's starting to, to knit together. So the next things that we need to do is we need to collectively as a group go through the, the training on how to use the website, the back end of it and uh, continue to give them content. So whether we, and I shot an email about this, and Sue, I completely respect your opinion, no picture, et cetera, but uh, Jim and Irene, if we wanna have something for like, board, here's the Board of Supervisors, election, like we were elected on this date, our term is up this date, some statistics around us, that might be useful. Same thing with like uh, Andy George, here's Andy, he works for Kozlov Stout, he's been the solicitor for X number of years, Jim McCarthy is the, the engineer, just some background information so that people have a little more content rather than just like engineers, Jim McCarthy. That was just my thought <clears throat> behind it. I agree. Uh, as well as uh, yeah, what nice. uh, what Susan or Sue had said 
I apologize, Sue. I, I've been dealing with somebody at work named Susan, and she's very particular. Okay, that is my name. <laughs> about that. Um, but Sue, uh, Sue mentioned that we should have things like the the craft codes, a link directly to craft codes, and the the requests, the forms that craft uses. Same thing with the zoning form that we have for McCarthy. All of that stuff. The the goal here is to have the the website essentially be a one stop shop. If anybody needs anything, they can go there and barring anything strange, they should be able to find it. Um, well, and I, and I said that because I do get phone calls of people looking for building permits and they say they've been on our website and all they see is that zoning permit. Yeah. And, you know, it just is, I think it would be easier for people if there would just be a link to craft. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. So I'd like to, and I think they're, they're in the process of building this specifically is a, kind of a, the index of here's everybody official and, and service in the township. And if you click that, it would take you to another page. So like your codes and zoning, craft codes, you click it and it goes, okay, here's craft, here's their website. Here's a, a bunch of their forms at zoning, building, electrical, plumbing, whatever. Um, same thing with McCarthy engineering or uh, for, if you need to ask for the, like a zoning hearing or variance or anything like that, having, having all of that there rather than somebody having to call and you tell them to go somewhere else and then them having to bounce around. It's just, it's so much easier to have everything there. Um, I did see we got a couple of the, the older ordinances or some of the, I shouldn't say older, but just some of the ordinances were loaded up. That's good. It's an excellent first step. And if we I didn't have, send them those, did you send them those? I, I think I had it out in the Google drive. So that might've okay. been, that might've been me. Um, okay. I've been pulling through any of the old records that I have of things and getting it out there. The, the next step after we have anything out on the, the site would be, uh, and it's just a function of time and, and effort is to go through and retype the, the ordinances and I had talked about this before so that it, it actually shows up in a search engine because right now those older documents when they were scanned they're not they're not OCR at all it's essentially it's a picture it was like you snapped a picture of a page so a lot of the the neat things that we can do with somebody trying to find help on something for like I need to know if there's a noise ordinance if we have everything indexed correctly if they search noise in the top in the search bar it should take them right to okay here's the noise ordinance from 2021 here's this here's that here's the other thing everything that contains noise right well, you now know, you just said something about ocr i think when i scan something i can i think there is a button to click on ocr yeah so the the problem that we run into and it's it's a good thing to do that so if you're if you are scanning stuff always do that um a lot of the older documents are skewed and there's a lot of at least the ones that i saw there's handwritten stuff which really messes with that well, if, if you're if you're taking them from the old website, yeah, that those are going to be crooked. Okay. Um, so but okay. I was just going to scan them all in. Like I actually scan page by page. I don't yeah. feed it. Okay. Well, I mean, feeding it feeding it shouldn't be a problem. Um, well, it, it goes crooked if you feed it. Oh, okay. Well, that might be something else that we have to look at then. That's, <laughs> why, that's why I right. scan it page. It takes longer, but it looks yeah. nicer. So. Okay. Well, we'll figure out the, the nuts and bolts of it, but the, the end result here, whether it's a, a type up or a scan with either what we have or maybe something a little bit nicer for a, a, an indexing piece of software, um, having it so that if you search for a keyword, it'll take you to a whole bunch of things like, okay, every ordinance that contains uh, parking would, would come up if you just search for the word parking or like the, the parking request, the handicap parking request that we have. That's the, the end goal that I have in mind is have everything at everybody's fingertips easily. Like we live in the era of, of Google searches, having everything at your fingertips. This, this should be the next logical extension of that. Anybody questions, comments, concerns, or should we move on to the next item? So if you need help with typing, I could certainly help. Well, um, yeah, because now it comes into the busier part of the year too. So no, I'm done. Um, Okay. But so what about the training? So I had sent out an email. I think everybody said they were basically free other than Thursday because of the, the board meeting. Um, so I'll connect with Lisa and see what we have for an evening, maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. Around that. Yeah. Um, right. Honestly, I'm probably going to be the, the stumbling block on that because my work schedule has been interesting to say the least. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll try and figure out when, when I can become mutually available to, or if there's any way that I can sequester myself for a little bit for an hour or two to, to do the training with you guys. Um, okay. 
but uh, I'll keep you in the loop in that same email thread that we have going. Okay. Next up, uh, we actually received two complaints this past month. Uh, there's one about the Tuck Me Inn located at 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Um, you guys were, were on that email and saw the, the pictures and the specifics. Um, so keep me honest, Craft Codes was engaged directly about that after we received the complaint form? Uh, no, because when I emailed it to you, um, there was basically no, no direction to me saying, okay give this to craft so i didn't uh, that's why it's on the agenda that's fine i would say give that one to craft for sure okay because that one's i think pretty open and shut that's, there's not <laughs> not a lot of gray area on that one okay um jim and irene what were your thoughts on that one um i know we've gotten some residents that ask about legal advice and just to clarify it we're allowed to tell them to contact the brooks county bar association and that uh, organization can help them find an attorney. And so kind of, we're out of the loop. We're just pointing them in the right direction. Yeah. For all intents and purposes, we're not lawyers. We can't, we legally can't give legal advice. Right. But we so, can direct okay. them as to where to get it. Pers and this way, it's, we're not favoring any legal group. We're not um, providing anything else other than, oh, just use your Google search to mm -hmm. just look up uh, Berks County Bar Association. Association. The only glitch is actually when I did it on the computer, depending on which search engine that you used, kind of took you to some crazy pages. So they could just be directed to the Berks County website and the Berks County website can also provide them with a lot of information. Okay, very good. Okay. Might not be a bad idea to, to add that as a, a thing for the website. Yeah. For just a referral like the Berks Bar Association. I'll, I'll make a note and I'll send that over to Lisa And too. I'm pretty sure there was a link from the county website to the Berks County Bar Association. So, and that's helpful for residences again, you know. Hopefully Kraft can get in there and perhaps point this towards the uh, Department of Health because it didn't look, didn't look good to me with all that mold. No, no, there, there was not a single good thing that I could find in any of those pictures. There yeah. was, there was nothing but bad. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to get the, the individual that made that complaint the help that they need. Yes. Okay, next one is the 6163 Main Street complaint. Um, for, the, for the efforts of discretion on this, um, did you guys look at the email and did you get a chance to go into it in any, any real high degree? So I guess my question is, is the complainant the person who resides in one of those addresses or they live no. down the street? No, That's he lives up the street. Okay. I mean, we could certainly contact Animal Rescue League. Mm. It's not a problem, but um, I don't know as to what else we can do. I know we sent that email to Andy. Yeah. So I, from, from what Andy had said, I think what we would want to do, and the reason I'm erring on the side of discretion on this is I don't want to start potentially a fence feud between neighbors here by getting into, into too much of it. Um, we should probably, based on our everybody's mutual consensus on this, we should notify the police. That way they can keep an eye out for it. We should notify Animal Rescue League about a potential animal cruelty situation. And uh, I, I think believe based... the police have been notified several okay. times. Okay, good. 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 I can call them again. I mean, if Worst case scenario, I can call them too. That's it's either way. Just as long as it's on their radar, that's the important thing. And then, depending on what the outcome is that we have from either one of those things, the the point was made that the if they are actually doing what what the alleged states, it's it's not permitted in community core zoning. So, right. So we'll have, we can go down that avenue as well if we get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, as for the, the other item, the pool and the fence, uh, I think there's something in zoning about that. And there might even be something in IPMC about you need to have a, a certain height fence around a pool for safety reasons. So he, they never got a permit for that. Can we make them get a permit after the fact? Yeah, I think so. So I need to notify Kraft about that. Yeah, as I say, technically it's, it's an illegal structure. Um, 
and it could be a well, situation where schools in our township do need permits. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's considered unlawfully placed at that point. Um, generally, I don't like to to err on the heavy handed side of that. It's just mostly like again, if you get caught, just come on, make it right. You probably didn't even know, but if we have a situation where they're doing something unsafe about it and they reply for the permit and they can't get the permit because it's it's not done right they have really two options they have to fix it or they have to remove it right so okay so i think the the takeaway items on that is the police are already aware um we're going to notify animal rescue league and we're going to engage craft about the the permit okay, okay. cool Next item on the agenda is the statewide tax recovery. Uh, we've received another request for exemption uh, for a Robbie Hartman for the year of 2013. Uh, they are deceased. So much like the ones that we had last month, I'd make a motion to approve the request for exemption for Robbie Hart for the year 20,000 or 2013. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. Irene. Aye. Okay. We have another request for exemption from statewide tax recovery. This is for the year 2009. It's for Mary Arbogast, who is also deceased. We'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. <laughs> We're going to do rock, scissors, uh, I, was, I was just about to say, with video <laughs> on, you guys can do rock, paper, scissors to see who gets it. I gave it to Jim, so Irene, you get the next one. <laughs> Um, roll call, Peter. Aye. Aye. Uh, Jim. Aye. Irene. Aye. Okay. Next item is the Road Project 2020. Uh, I have a little bit of a write-up. Uh, rather than trying to spell out the specifics of the road for measurements and things like that, uh, I've opted to take a, a slightly more general approach. I'm going to be running by Jim McCarthy for two reasons. <clears throat> One, I'm sure between now and when they actually do the road work, it will probably need a little more than we originally anticipated. And two, I wanna make sure that there's not anything we missed. So I'm gonna suggest the wording uh, that we include in the bid packet that all required underlaying corrective work needed to repair the surface for proper adhesion of the oil and chip paving uh, be made. Specific attention is needed on the following roadways. So I'll spell out the ones that we had identified, but this gives the, the room for if they return a bid and they say, you know, you actually need a, a cutout at this other spot, then we can look at it and say, yeah, okay, you're right or mm, no. <laughs> so I'm thinking that's probably the best way to go. And I just didn't get a chance to talk to Jim McCarthy this past week. Uh, but my concern is uh, potentially because of doing this in the, the early part of 2021, we'll have gone through yet another winter season. So there may be things that we hadn't identified that exist then that didn't exist now. Um, Peter, if I could just ask, Certainly. Um, since uh, we're having a bit more stuff that is just physically there in the office, if you could just like print up a sheet yeah. for each of the roads, this way we could have it on the board. And so we all could kind of reference as to where we're at. So I know we had discussed this before having, yeah. you know, physical aspect. I, I like stuff on Google Drive, but I like to be able to come into the office and say, you know, you know, under consideration, under contract, yeah. you know, nearing completion. And so we could, you know, have that kind of visual cue so we all know where we're at. So food for thought here, would it be maybe beneficial for us to get like a three by three, like an architectural drawing size map of Marion Township with the roadways on it? For me, no. Okay. Um, because like you could tell me where something is and I could say, okay, and never find it. If you just tell me the road and, and like what's going on and there's a piece of paper and then I, I could follow that. Okay better, but I, I don't know what anyone else's opinion is. So for example, like um, um, I hung up some calendars in a month by month calendar and I wrote stuff as to when we're going to do it. And so far that's been a big help. So okay. you know, yeah, just I can, I can schedule certainly, everything. can certainly work on getting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this way, like kind of, just have to pull out say, hey, the oh, the road's getting done or, you know, and then as things are starting to move along, I'm sure things are going to get scheduled. And so we'll have a reasonable idea and this way we could all check up on stuff. So if something's not getting done it, and it was scheduled, I, any one of us can make a phone call and say, Hey, where are you at with this? So. Okay. 
yeah, that's that's no problem. Should be able to do that relatively easily. Yeah. Yeah, just just a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I can give you a, a list of what we have in the the, the road work packet that we're looking That'd at doing. Great. Um, yeah. While we're on the subject of roads, because I don't see it on the agenda, which is okay, I'm just going to bring it up. Spur Road. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we've been working with Tulpa Hawken about that. Um, talked to Andy this past week, and um, one of the things he had asked for about the construction easements that we had offered to help with uh, Tulpa Hawken on is there's usually a graphic component of that that shows where we're talking about getting a construction easement in place. So I just have to get something put onto a, a map that shows where we're gonna be asking for as part of that easement. Um, once we have that, Andy can then move forward with what he needs to do on, on trying to get those secured. Okay, next item is the road crew safety gear. Yeah. I apologize. I, I haven't gotten any further um, numbers. Um, I've been looking online at some stuff and it's just a matter of them adding in, um, like adding on Marion Township to some of the gear. It's a lot less expensive. So, I mean, there's a multitude of websites and I apologize. I will try to get numbers out this week, but it's, it is less expensive than both rapid response and Whitmer's as far as pricing and um, uh, Whitmer's did not offer me any lettering number. Well, that's because John had stopped at that place um, in, on my behalf. Rapid response, I didn't get quotes on lettering. So knowing exactly what the guys want and their sizes, I'm going to be able to get a little bit more specific numbers and I'll put that together over the course of this week and get that out in e email to everyone. But honestly, it looks as if we're going to have a better um, pricing from uh, an online uh, website rather than going to any place in person. And I like to stay local, but money's money. And so I know I'd ask Sue which of the gentlemen are out on the road more often. If possible, I'd like to get them at least, you know, three shirts for those guys that are out on a daily basis. And so, you know, again, it, it, it's money and I'm hoping we could get them decent enough gear so that we don't have to buy them gear every year. I can imagine we'd have to replace out t-shirts, but certainly vests and sweatshirts should last about two to three years, I imagine. So, yeah, very good. but I'll get those numbers this week. I apologize for not having them today. No need to apologize. I look forward to seeing the email. Yeah, it's amazing how much less expensive it is. Yeah, yeah, the, the internet is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Yeah. It's overwhelming though, because there's just so much out there. But I can't find um, Butch's sleeveless shirts though. <laughs> he, might, he might have to do a little bit of DIYing on his sleeveless shirts. I know, I know. I wish he would join us with these meetings. So. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Jim or Sue, about that? No. Okay. <laughs> Next up is the RKL contract. Uh, it expires at the end of this year. And uh, Irene had been looking at getting uh, uh, requests for proposals out for people. And uh, I think you had gotten a couple of them back. No. No? And that's the surprising thing. The only one I got back from Aiken. Sue, do, did you put that up? I don't have that in front of me as far as the, the email. Did you yes, put that up I, on the drive? I scanned it for today's meeting. Yeah. Okay. Is, it, is it in there, Peter? It should be in the, the PDF packet, mark number two. Okay, let me see if I could get to that. Um, I only had I only had one email today, so yeah. No, 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 that was um, so it would be under PDF then. Let me see if I yeah. So it's the twenty twenty dash ten number two workshop agenda items. Number two. Okay, let me pull that up. And I'm scrolling um, through it now, and it yeah. looks like that is on page twenty three. Twenty three. Okay, let me get to that. So I actually had contacted. I think a total of six agencies and because it's not a specialty that a lot of um, CPA firms do, uh, it's hard to find someone who does municipal um, auditing. And I had reached out to a number of agencies in Lebanon as well. So I'm just really surprised that no one has responded to us aside from Aikens. And I had dealt with Aikens before through another, um, uh, work environments. And I got to say, I, I'm, I'm quite pleased with them. They, again, they're readily available by phone, etc. So it, it's on page 27, if anyone else is looking at it. So the quoted fee for the above auditing services, 
uh, hundred, uh, $5,960. So, and, um, again, not being familiar with completely with what RKL provided, I believe it's similar. So, and I'm sure if it's something that well, I did, I did scan the RKL. Yeah, the RKL one. The RKL one is almost uh, for the 2022 year. Yes. Almost double. No, no, no. I, I, but I'm saying like as far as services provided. Oh. So it, that's that's the the information. So I believe it's the um, same information. I'm not a hundred percent as far as what they will be filing. And I can go a little bit more in detail because the only guideline I have is what RKL had provided to us as far as uh, services um, uh, previously. So I have to kind of sit side by side with what RKL provided and make sure that um, it's the same exact information that um, uh, Aikens will be providing to us as well. You know, again, considering they're the only ones that responded to us, I, I, I'm still shocked because it's been a month. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to hope that someone else provides us, but um, I'll sit down both with what Aikens, the, the Aikens email, as well as RKL email, and, and go side by side. If there's a service that Aikens didn't list that RKL did provide, I'll contact them, say how much more, or is this part of the package deal? And so we'll have a definite number, but that's a significant savings. Yeah. That's a so, huge savings. Yeah. And again, I could say I had a very good um working relationship with Aikens previously. So I don't have any concern as far as working with them. I think we've had an excellent working relationship with RKL. They were certainly quite kind to us this year as far as holding out. But then again, the world kind of stopped as well. So um, maybe that worked in our favor, but I'm hoping to not run into the same paperwork problem that we had uh, coming for next year. I hope it's just a matter of grabbing this, grabbing that. And so far, um, both Sue and Dan have been absolutely invaluable with helping me keep everything in order. So, okay. very good. And as always, thank you, Sue. Oh I, my God. I don't think we, we sure. say thank you enough. Uh, and Dan, it, you've been a, a huge help to, to Irene throughout this process. So we're, we're glad to have you on the team. Thank you. Okay. So we'll, we'll continue to, to keep tabs on that as we get towards the end of the year. But uh, yeah, just from, a high level if Akins is doing similar to what RKL is doing in the capacity of an audit and a couple of the reports that that need to be prepped that it's, it's a pretty striking difference in yeah. cost. I think what I'll do is I'll uh, give them a call this week um, just to clarify which uh, reports that they do file what's considered routine along with looking at what RKL has done for us because RKL just does so much behind the scenes like you know again not having done this before, I need to know exactly what reports are filed on our behalf. Yeah, absolutely. You want to make an yeah. apples to apples comparison. Yeah, yeah. One hundred percent understand. Yeah. Okay. Next up is the Western Berks Planning Commission. That's for the the joint zoning. Uh, I was in wow. attendance on October the fifteenth. The next meeting is November seventeenth, uh, two thousand twenty, at seven p.m. at the Robazonia Borough Hall. Uh, there were a couple of questions that they had that uh, I told them I'd take back and we could review and discuss. Uh, one of the concerns that was raised was around lots that are, uh, would be technically non-conforming that are outside of the, the, the core zoning area. For example, there's some residential properties that are inter, interleaved amongst some of the ag preserve zoning. Um, after talking to Andy about this briefly, there's really not much that can be done around that simply because of the the nature of that. If you get too granular and you start zoning every little property that, that pops up every little area throughout the township, you get in, start getting into a spot zoning situation, which uh, you definitely should not do. So the, the first concern that was raised by the, the committee there was, uh, what do we do about properties that are non-conforming? And it's, it's for, for note, it's a pretty small percentage. Uh, the new zoning is, is pretty good about making sure everybody's going to be conforming under kind of the, the projected use that we have for, for the township. 
there are some pockets here and there that don't quite fit that particular rule though. So any of those would have to be just handled by variants. And uh, the one, the use case that was outlined was somebody has a, a large tract of land as a farm. They divide off about a half acre because they want to build a house on it at some point, like when they retire. A lot of the, the zoning that we have outlined, you wouldn't necessarily be able to have a half acre sized property under the new rules without certain other underlying infrastructures. Like for example, if it was a, under a half acre, you couldn't do it unless you had a connection to public sewer, that sort of, that sort of thing. So their, their concern there was that we might be limiting some of the, the future development. Um, and my counterpoint is possibly, however, you can't, you can't meet everything 100%. You're always gonna have things that are, are kind of a gray area that are, are gonna defy what your, your normal model is. And you just have to have a good exception process. In this case, it's, it's a simple variance. Um, one of the other things that I brought up is a, if you're using that particular thing, the, the small property size and trying to build a house on it, you may run into problems for simple things. Like if you want to put a septic system in there, you may not have enough space. The, the current guidelines for installing a system like that may say you need a minimum of an acre. Of an acre. So it may be kind of a non-issue if we're worried about that. There's other limiting factors that that lean on that that prevent it from, from being a real concern for us. Um, the other issue that they, they had, and it's neither one are our stopping blocks. We just have to let them know that's exactly what Marion wants to do because the way Marion is, or specifically the way the joint zoning is set up is we kind of have things that are specific to each one of the municipalities. Um, we try to be consistent. That's the point of joint zoning is that everybody's essentially playing by the same rules but there are things that are different for each one that are tailored to the, the specific needs of that area. So if we say, nope, this is exactly what we want, we wanna, we wanna run with it, they're not gonna object to it, they're not gonna stop it because that's kind of the, the nature of cooperation, but they wanna make sure that everything has been considered. It's just a, an extra layer of review. So the other item that they raised was our, our frontage that we have in there for things like low density residential, um, medium density residential, uh, things like that are significantly larger than a lot of the other municipalities that are involved in the joint zoning. So for example, low density residential for the, the other municipalities is a minimum lot width of 70 feet. Marion Township specified in the plan that uh, if the minimum lot area is reduced to 20,000 square feet, the minimum lot width must be 150 feet. And to, to go that small, which is I think 20,000 feet, is roughly a half acre, it's like 0 .0, it's 0 0.49 or something like that. Um, basically a half acre, you would have to have a connection to some sort of sanitary sewer uh, in order to have a lot size that small. Um, their concern was less about the, the, the infrastructure end of it and more about the 150 feet. For low density residential, 150 feet is probably a little much, but for our usages, I don't think that that's really that much of a problem. One of the concerns that they had was Main Street, which I didn't realize it at the time when I was talking to them, but Main Street isn't zoned low density residential. That's uh, town center, which has a completely different set of rules to it. Um, this, they had the same concern about medium density residential having the 150 lot width, 150 foot lot width, um, and I, I don't think that that, I don't think that really is that much of a problem. And again, it would just be a situation that if we have, if we have somebody that's in low density residential, they would either be non-conforming and they'd need a variance if they did things, um, or we'd have to really substantially adjust the 150 feet. Um, and the reason I'm not opting personally to make that suggestion is any of the properties that I know of that are in low density residential that are below that 150 foot mark are pretty far below the 150 foot mark. So it would be, I don't think it would be in our best interests to do that. What are your, what are your thoughts, Jim and Irene? I guess I need a little bit more time to have you give me a little bit of a oh, cramped that, course that's on fine. That's fine. I'd be happy to, to connect and give you an information session. Jim, same yeah. you, if you want me to Absolutely. run you through it. Um, yeah. So Thank this, you. just as a, a, a further step back, this has been previously reviewed by our planning commission. 
Um, it was reviewed pretty extensively by myself and Peter Wallace when he was on the board, as well as McCarthy Engineering. Uh, Andy also reviewed it. Everything should be in good order. It's just a, a question about form and fitment. If we all agree that this is still the way we want to proceed with making sure that development and, and use goes the way that it should, we make the suggestion to the Planning Commission that, yep, we're, we're okay. Your concerns that you had, and I can type up a brief response that variances are a thing for a reason. If you have mm -hmm. a property that's non-conforming, it's a pretty small percentage of them. You may be one of the unlucky individuals that has to do a variance. Um, my immediate follow-up thought on that is, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this slightly, uh, slightly begrudgingly, because we haven't sent out the other letter about the, uh, the, one, the on lot ordinance yet, mm -hmm. we could add a letter in there about the upcoming change in zoning. Mm -hmm and just let people know that there is gonna be a change in zoning. Vast majority of properties in, in the township are, are gonna be conforming, many of which under the old zoning rules were not conforming. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're making improvements there, but there are still people that will be non-conforming. If you are a non-conforming property, you may have to get a variance at some point, depending on what you're trying to do to your property. Mm -hmm. um, just something short, something sweet to the point. We can, once we have the zoning up on the website after it's been approved, we can make sure that it's available there. We'll have a copy in the township office that sort of stuff, but we could get kind of the, the two of them out to, to properties at the same time. Yeah, I, I guess before I would make a decision, like I said, I, I think I need a short crash course on th this information. Unfortunately, a large part of what I've been learning as a new supervisor has been basically concentrating around the financials and it's been overwhelming. <laughs> That's no, no so, problem. So it's, I don't want to. I don't want to sound ignorant, but I want to make an informed decision before, you know, I give an opinion or a statement. So, and uh, um, I, I want. I just want to understand it better, and then this way, also, if I'm approached with a question, I can give a better response. Okay. So I'm, I'll, I'm not I'll, shy and saying I don't no, know. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's fine. I'd rather you say you don't know oh, and that you need yeah. more information than to make a bad decision. Oh, absolutely. So, um, if you have any time or you want to give me a call at some point this weekend, we can figure out a time that we can, we can get connected sure. and go over it. Sure. Um, a lot we of it, I don't, it's, it's pretty. Computer, too, yeah. We could do it via computer or phone, whatever you like. Whichever, doesn't matter yeah. to me. But um, a lot of it is, it's pretty in depth, but at a high level, it's, it's not super hard to, to get, get your hands around. Um, the biggest thing is going to be we look at the map and you kind of understand what each one of the things on the map translates to. So like the, the low density residential, when you look at it, it that means that these properties are affected by these sorts of rules. Right, right. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it, it should be, shouldn't be too bad. No problem. Um, the other I, question. I think I'm a quick learner. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have a good track record of it for sure. Um, <laughs> The other last thing that they had was we do have a stipulation in there about utilities, any lot less than one acre uh, being potentially uh, served by township approved central sanitary sewer service and central water service. Um, that's what the rule is for everybody else. We have a, a, an addendum in there where it says within Marion Township, any lot less than one acre shall be served by township approved central sanitary sewer and any lot less than 20,000 square feet, so less than a half acre. Uh, would be served by township approved central sanitary sewer and central water services. Um, while we don't have any plan to do water, I think that was originally included by the engineer and the planning commission around uh, essentially making sure that we don't have anybody doing really, really lo small lot sizes. Because when you get into that, you start getting into the area of like medium density residential or, or more. And we don't have much of that zoned in. I think the only medium density residential that we have is Stonecroft. So we'd be talking about that, that level of density or, or even closer together. So essentially it, without prohibiting it, it, it sort of prohibits that, that style of development. Um, or if you're going to do that, you'd have to have proper infrastructure in place to do it. So on its surface, it sounds scary like, oh, you are going to have to do this. Mm -hmm. it, that's not really the case. It would be if somebody wanted to put a development in, they'd have to probably get something rezoned and then they'd have to do exactly what happened with Stonecroft. They'd have to get a municipal water and sewer service installed. Mm -hmm. So but it doesn't preclude changes down the road, let's say 30, 40, 50 years from now. No, it's, that's, yeah. that's the nice thing about this is while it's, it's a big exercise to change zoning, it's not, it's not like we're, we're carving this in stone. 
if we if we find that something has to get changed in the case of like I think North Heidelberg right now is looking at rezoning something for their the, the ski what used to be the ski slope if we find we have to change something it's there's a process we can we can change it we can adjust uh, we just want to try to get it as close to the mark the first time that way we don't have a bunch of adjustments it would just be one or two things over the next couple of years or, or decade as they crop up Any further questions on that? No, thank you. Excellent. Okay. Next up is the old furnace. Uh, I called several HVAC companies. Uh, Sue, thank you for sending the, the more local one along. I have not called them yet, but I will. Um, of the companies I called, uh, one returned my call and is willing to come out and look at it. That's uh, Essig. They'll be out this upcoming Thursday, or excuse me, Wednesday, the 28th, um, to evaluate it and give us a written uh, estimate. One of the other companies that I called responded and said that we're sorry, we're too busy right now. We can't come out and take a look at it, which is fine. And the third company has not called me back yet. So more on that as we have it, but uh, hopefully before the end of the month or early November, we'll have somebody in to disconnect the old heating system from power, oil, water, et cetera. Uh, that way we can start dismantling it and it won't bother Sue with, making weird noises throughout the day. <laughs> yeah. um, so I can, every now and then I can hear like it tries to go on, but it, you know, it doesn't because it's- Yeah, it's, it's probably just the igniter. Like if the thermostat is sending a bad, or what used to be the thermostat is sending a bad signal, it's probably just the electrical portion of it clicking. But all told, it's, it's a housekeeping item that we need to do. So it's mm -hmm. good it's getting done. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we have that out, we can actually start yanking old radiators out and pipes and all that other fun stuff as time permits. Okay. Next up is the 1124 Route 419 Glen Brubaker Creek View Dairy. Uh, at last month's meeting, we approved the extending of time for completion of improvements. Uh, this agreement uh, was uh, actually, hold on. Yeah, we so said we just did, we extended the time on that. The property on October 1st, or, uh, or excuse me, lost my place there. April 2018, the property had been transferred from Glenn and Janet Brewbreaker to Glenn and Janet Brewbreaker's Irrevocable Living Trust. Uh, the Marion Township Subdivision Land Development Improvement and uh, Maintenance Agreement needs to be amended and assigned because of the transfer to that living trust. Um, say let's save this for for thursday night but i think it's just a simple clerical matter that we have to, to re reassign the agreement okay next up the trick-or-treat night is on saturday october 31st 2020 from 6 p.m to 8 p.m i hope everybody has a, a safe and happy halloween and uh i hope everybody wears masks potentially under their masks so uh, weather permitting yeah. i will be sitting outside um, doing my socially distant Halloween. If anyone would like to join me, I plan on potentially providing some adult trick or treats too. So if anyone oh. would like to uh, <laughs> sit with me, just bring a chair and uh, we'll keep our distance and say hello to the neighbors. So I may have to swing by with the kids. There you go. I think there's hello. only about like a dozen kids in our neighborhood. So I always prepare the candy in little brown bags. Anyone? Way, so it kind of works out for me. So <laughs> if anyone would like to join me. Good, 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 good. Okay. Next is the Berks County Department of Emergency Services. There was a 2021 statement of costs. And I believe that didn't go up as of last year. And Dan and I included those numbers in our uh, budget. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. Next is the Animal Rescue League 2021 contract. Did uh, you guys get a chance to look that over at all? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's kind of the same scenario as last year where they wanted us to um, contract with them, mm -hmm. but they, they will still come out on an as needed basis and just charge whomever needs their services. So, like in that instance that we're going to contact them about that particular residence, I would assume that that residence is going to get built enough a township. So, so I don't think 
and I'd have to check this, they're, the situation is they will always respond to things about animal cruelty yep. and like abuse, no matter what. Um, if there's a situation where they have to do something, my, my understanding is there's a direct bill back to the involved party rather than the township in the, the case of not having the contract. And uh, anybody who is a, a homeowner or a resident, if you have a situation where you've, you have a dog or a cat that you have to take in, they'll still accept the animal. It's just you individually who are, are paying for that rather than the community. So as much as I, I'm very much an animal person and uh, I think what the Animal Rescue League does is a, a very good thing. Um, I just don't know, again, much like last year, if it's financially in the best interest of the township based on what we'd be using out of that to, to do it. Yeah. Again, only having been in the township for about four years now, I mean, not not knowing if there's a need, I don't see anything when it comes to looking at the, the uh, bills. Um, I don't think we're an area that has puppy mills or any other concern of that nature, so I can't imagine that it would justify a contract unless we started getting like a whole bunch of odd bulk um, phone calls or complaints about issues. So yeah, I want to say it was 20, oh geez, it was probably 2018, wasn't it, Sue? Was the last time? Yeah, we, we gave a donation. Yeah. Excuse me for a minute. Certainly. So the, the last year before they started trying to do the contract thing, I think we had a total of seven. It was either six or seven events where ARL came out and it was stray dog stray cat sort of thing where people asked them to come out and and deal with them so it was it was very minimal and when we figured it out by the the cost of that that first year's ask for the contract the the cost per visit was very high mm -hmm. uh, based on what our historic use had been and I know this past year I don't think we've had any we've been lucky we haven't had any instances where we've caught wind of them needing to come out for any reason. Um, yeah, I, I've had a few phone calls and I tell them to call the, um, the, oh, the, the state, dog catcher, state, the dog, state catcher. dog pound catcher, yeah, the warden, whatever that's called. Warden. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, but, and I only put it on the agenda again because you kind of discussed it, but you didn't say, mm -hmm. yeah, we want to do it or no, we don't want to do it. So like, I just need a definitive answer so I can put it in the minutes. Okay. Um, but I know, um, like back in 2018, they were, they also said they were going to charge $2 per capita, which was, it was still a phenomenal amount of money mm -hmm. for what we used yeah. them for. Yeah. I mean, even the community cap control at 50 cents per capita is still a Quite decent a chunk of change. Mm -hmm. Um, we had previously given a $500 donation mm -hmm. to the ARL. The last time we gave that, I think, was 2018. Yeah. So, the only thing that uh, really jumps out at me is, like, and I, I don't think we'd necessarily have to do that, be the $250 retainer for the emergency hoarding situations. But again, if it's a, a situation of, like, animal cruelty, retainer or no retainer, that's still mm -hmm. within their mission to do. Um, and they're a private organization, correct? They're not a not-for-profit or are they not for profit? I'd, I'd have to look. I honestly don't know that, that okay. answer off the top of my head. I want to say not profit, but. Okay. Yeah, I always kind of thought they were non profit too. Okay. Yeah. I'd want to double check that then. Yeah, I'm almost positive they're a non profit. And the reason I said this is the one of the first years that I was on the board, um, we stopped giving to a couple of organizations because after we reviewed it a little further, they were not not for profit organizations. Yeah. So it's just like if you're. If you're a profit organization, yes, you may be doing a very good thing, but I don't necessarily know if we want to be donating to you. Mm -hmm. um, so, next thing on the agenda is, I apologize, I'm fighting with my mouse here for a second, uh, the pressure washers, or pressure washer and gas cans. Uh, Butch is hesitant to use the stale gas in the big tank for the, the new pressure washer. Um, so at this point, if we have a, a situation where the, the, the tank, the gas is uh, problematic in that tank, uh, we should probably just get, get it pumped out and get rid of it. Yep. And we had discussed that at a prior meeting, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was, this is not, not a new thing, but it, the, the question is, uh, cause I think it's like half full. There's a decent amount of fuel on there. 
mm -hmm. is trying to get it out. Uh, we can either pump it into another drum or I can call like countrywide or countryside, excuse me, um, yeah. and see if they're able to come in and accommodate that, pumping out the old fuel and disposing of it. If you'd like, I mean, I know I'm down at the office a little bit more often. If you want to just tell me who to call and we could ask them a couple of questions about the uh, what to do with those gas tanks so that they're non-functioning anymore and we're complying with regulations, safety, et cetera. So, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, we would need some documentation about their status if that property were ever to change hands. Oh, no, so, this, this, this is yeah. even the buried one. I think this is the one that's up. Oh, it's above ground. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yes, the, as for the other ones, though, we do okay. want to get, I do want to get rid of those at some point. Okay, so, so if you want to, if you want to shoot me an email over what information, I could certainly make phone calls, because I'm down at the office a bit more than you are, and this way we could address that, but as far as the pressure washer, again, Binkley and Hearst uh, resent us um, a new price sheet. They're still the least expensive. Butch had actually gone down to Binkley and Hearst to look at the pressure washers. He didn't know that I went to, which was kind of funny. Um, so, um, it's the least expensive. It's pretty much what they want. I want to say it's 519 and change. And that's, that is the best price for that, um, gallons per minute from all the places that I've gone to. Again, they don't want a hot water one. I think a hot water one would be great, but they want the cold water one. I have no problems with it. I just need the okay to go down and purchase it with a gas can. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk about that Thursday night. Uh, okay. I I don't have any objection to it. I've I've been of the opinion for quite a while now that we need we need something. Okay. And we don't. Ideally, we shouldn't be borrowing like Franklin's yeah. from him. Thanks to Franklin yeah. for for yeah. doing that. But we should we should have the equipment that the township needs to function without mm -hmm. having to to source it from the community. Yeah. Um. I guess on that on that uh, same note, if we could start keeping a database as to when things were purchased. Mm -hmm and uh, annual maintenance and, and kind of keep that routine and make that the standard so that um, if there's any maintenance that needs to be done on any new tools or any old tools, we could kind of keep a record of that and make sure the road crew keeps up with that so that, again, that becomes quite standardized. So okay. if someone wants to help me keep a, uh, um, create a new database for any new purchases, yeah, I'm thinking we should probably just get uh, essentially a, an Excel sheet to function as the, the database for that of just any of the tools and equipment that we have and then keep a, a separate log book essentially of maintenance that we'd have. Like here's the, the snow plow that we bought. It was purchased at this date, this price. Um, a lot of that I think we already have in place because we had to, to get it together for one of the insurance related things that yep. we did. Um, but just getting it all centralized so that we know, okay, these are all the things and then the next step would be, okay, here's the log sheet of the pressure washer. We bought it at this date. We changed the oil. We did this. We did that. We did the other thing. Or in the case of the, the trucks, we put new wiper blades on. We did the oil. We had the, the body sandblasted and powder coated on this date. Um, I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. And I started keeping um, some books on the desk as far as data and information that anyone, any of the supervisors or anyone that working in the office can access as reference material. I want to keep that going. I think that would be wonderful to have that there. On that note, there are some um, annual updates from PSATs that I'd like to purchase. So this way they're, they're, they're uh, kept on the desk as well. So for example, like a copy of the Sunshine Laws, things like that. And maybe um, having a shelf or like a bookshelf somewhere so that we could just pull that information for quick reference. Of course, God bless Sue, she has everything filed, but this is the quick reference book. And if we need to, we could go to the particular file and, and pull out any further information. But as like a guidebook, just understanding it. So for example, like I say, we've, did, we've done some audits. I'm not gonna look at that information again for another year. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel every time that someone needs to do it, it it's, it's there. So if I could, you know, we could figure out something a little bit more. I'll get a list of the items that I think they're important to have out there and we'll start collecting that data, keeping it, and so that anyone can look at it, you know, as a reference item. I completely and utterly agree yeah. with you. I think it's a great thing to have a, the binders. Yeah. I know we've, we've talked about this numerous times for, yeah. to have I the binders available. It. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So that'll be on the agenda for uh, Thursday's meeting. And I look forward to purchasing the uh, pressure washer. I will purchase a little bow uh, out of my own pocket and stick it on there for Butch. 
so <laughs> or maybe maybe I'll, I have one in the house so he'll be happy <laughs> good good okay next item on the agenda is the garage lights uh, I either need to come in and work on hanging them or we need to hire somebody to hang them up uh, it's ultimately not hard to do it's just as time consuming because you have to get up the ladder hang the things in the ceiling hang the light go on to the next one um, I would say if I don't have something by November's meeting, if it's not done by November's meeting, let's seriously discuss that. And if not, we can maybe try and find a time when a couple of us can get together and, and go out. Because it's probably safer, and I don't know the OSHA rules on this one, but we probably shouldn't be doing that one person by themselves in the building yeah. Yeah. on a ludicrously tall ladder. Yeah. But um, On we'll, that uh, note, yeah. Can you take a look at your November schedule? I understand the guys um, pull the equipment out and start working on stuff um, for the winter. Can you take a look at your November schedule and have some tentative weekend dates that mm -hmm. we can all meet there and get the garage cleaned out? Um, and uh, if we get the road crew out to do that, we could start pulling everything out, categorizing it. Um, and I know we've discussed this before. Uh, getting rid of the hazardous materials that we need to get rid of. I know John had uh, um, uh, taken a, a look at some of that information. He would probably be able to provide good insight as to what stuff and how it needs to be disposed of. Um, but this way we could get that garage cleaned out. I'm tired of pulling up seeing baseballs in the window. Um, and, um, you know, I could... <laughs> Tan's laughing too. I could... Um, easily bring down, I have a small portable grill. I could bring down hot dogs and buns and some soda. You know, we could get, I'll, I'll bring my boys down. I'm sure John would come down and we could get some more hands out there just to move things, get them categorized again, um, logs so we know what we have and then, you know, get storage shelves, whatever it is that we need to do so we could get things back in the building in a clean orderly fashion. I mean, that place is just scary. Yep. So, so let me, let me look. I know we have obviously yep. the, the one weekend is the supervisor's meeting. Yeah. Um, I'll come down after that. I mean, if we I'm could either do it after, we could do it yeah. after. That would be fine. Yep. That might be a good, let me see. Good monopolization on the day. Uh, that would be the, the 21st, Sue. I don't have the schedule right in front of me. Well, it, so Thanksgiving is the, it was scheduled, uh, the supervisor's meeting is the 19th. No, that's the evening of that weekend. Yeah, the workshop meeting is the 14th. 14th, okay. And the, the board meeting is the 19th. Yeah. I mean, even if, we need to, if we need to pull things out, I, I'm pretty sure I have a portable tent if things need to be kept under a tent. You know, it's just the top tent, no, yeah. no size. So even if we just have to move things out or temporarily move them to another location just to get things out and get it cleaned, I mean, that place just needs to be swept also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Well, Sue knows I'm a neat freak, but um, just keeping things clean, keeping them maintained, I mean, that's just a little part of it. And I think, you know, it works on your psyche. If, if, if things look like crap, you tend to let them go to crap. So... And I think if we start taking a little bit more pride in, in what we have, I think it's going to, in some ways, boost morale a little bit. And people are like, hey, yeah, I live in Marion Township. And the public sees that we're maintaining things like, hey, just like you had mentioned earlier, if we want to put a little bio on the website, people's like, oh, we're, we're people, not just a name anymore. So yep. I, I always wave to everyone in town, but like no one knows who I am. Yeah, so, I do the same. I wave. Yeah. People look at me like I'm crazy, but I'd rather yeah. I'd yeah. rather have that be your, your takeaway is that I was overly pleasant to you rather yeah. than like I waved yeah. and he completely ignored me. So. Yeah. I, and who knows what else, like, kind of treasure we could find in there that we could hang up around the office or, you know, share with, let's say, the Marion Township Community Association, something historic. We don't know what kind of amazing things we might find in there. So. Absolutely. I, I think I, this was discussed before um, in prior years um, where the blackboard is, putting mm -hmm. shelving units there getting rid of that desk and whatever else is yeah. under those boxes. Yeah, I want to get all of it. Shelves there. So you might want to go in and take a look at that and just see what we need. Um, yeah, we can take some measurements and honestly, we can just pick up some, some 
metal shelves at like a harbor. I know the, the only thing that's in that the desk drawers, I believe, is um, manuals, like how to fix it manuals okay. for I mean, different we get, equipment. We can get boxes so on the shelf or something. Place, but um, yeah. you know, we can put those in a plastic box or something like that. Um, yeah. yeah. Peter. Yes. Jim, Jim's been trying to talk and he's on mute. Okay. Uh, it looks like Jim accidentally muted himself. Let me uh, ask Jim to unmute. There we go. There we go. Okay. Did you want to add something, Jim? No, I was just making a joke that maybe one of those baseballs is signed by Babe Ruth. <laughs> if, <laughs> if we're if we're incredibly lucky, that might pay, that that would be a good source of doing some uh, building rehab. Um, but like, I know there's a racket hanging up in there. I don't know if it's a racquetball racket or a tennis racket. I mean, there's some old tennis racket. That yeah. I mean, just throw that out. <laughs> Right. There's, there's some things that need to go, but then again, you know, I, I could take the baseballs and, and you can make a display with them and hang them up someplace, you know, as, as part of the historical aspects of the building, but I'm, I'm all about organizing. So I'm all about cleaning things up and so making it accessible, usable and clean. And this way, when someone needs something like they find it. So like we have some more signs in the garage. We, we have things that we don't even know that we have. And it's time to, to catalog them and so that we know what our assets are. Yeah, two, two quick ads on that. Um, the oil drum that's in the back there that's full of God knows what. I did manage <laughs> to get my hands on an empty 55 gallon drum so that when we go to do this, we can, I can bring that over and we can pump out the contents because the, the, one of the concerns that everybody had was if we try to move that, that barrel was gonna disintegrate. And its contents are just going to go everywhere. So I have Ooh. something we can. What was that, Dan? Just was that just a general? Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's it's pretty full. And uh, like I said, I think it's just been decades worth of just I don't know what this is. Dump it in there, which is not great. Um, so get that pumped out because I have a I have a, an oil grade transfer pump as well from something else that I've I've done in the past. But uh, get that pumped out get the old barrel that's questionable out so that we don't have to worry about moving it and having 55 gallons of, of who knows what spilled all over the floor. Um, the other thing is while we're on the subject of shelves and things, I'd like to try to get some like pegboard or something for the tools yeah. Yes. and have it be more like, uh, I want to say maybe a, more like a mechanics shop rather than what it is right now. Yep. Um, Very visual. Is, so then when someone mm -hmm. needs something, they see it and it's yep. there and they, but they also know where to put it back. Yep. So I, I worked at a place in high school that we had tools hanging on the wall and we actually had gone to the, the, the degree where the tool was on the wall and it was outlined. So if it was, if it was not there, you knew it right away. Um, so I think that would be a good thing while we're in the, the, the mode of reorganizing would be to try to lay out the space to include yes. some, some things like extra yes. toolboxes and, and yep. shelf space and racks okay. and things like that. And the only way to do that is to know what you have and what you need to get it organized. Precisely. Clean up. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only other thing that I want to touch on maybe while we're on the subject of the garage lights is I did see an email that went through that there's uh, some funding sources for next year, both grants and loans. And one of the things that is eligible that we could maybe make an application for is uh, renovations to public spaces and town halls. Yeah. If our building technically counts as a town hall, we might be eligible for that. And that might be something that we could try to leverage for things as simple as putting the drop ceiling in, the windows. Uh, if we wanted to try to make a, a really long shot request, I had talked about like it would be nice to be able to use the second floor. And it, right now it's not ADA accessible. Go full tilt and ask for grant money to put an elevator in. Worst thing that they Good can idea. say is, worst thing they can say is no. Um, yeah. But if we did actually get it, then we'd be able to start potentially focusing on trying to rehab the second floor because there's a lot of good good space up there it just has been not maintained well for a very long time um so if we got the elevator in the next question would be do we want to maybe shift some space around and put bathrooms on the second floor that we have from a plumbing standpoint relatively easy access because at least one of them is or actually both both areas up there are directly above the first floor bathrooms they wouldn't have to be quite as large but you could put something in there again if we had suitable grant money mm -hmm. that would be the, the thing to chase but just throwing that out there that we should look into that further because that was something that i don't think we we either knew about or had available to us in prior years can you resend that to me because i yeah. thought I, I saw that too and i wasn't quite sure if you could resend that to yeah, me i'll take a look at it and uh 
you know, I know people make the comments, and I think Dan made the comments, uh, was it yesterday, Sue, or the day before, about yesterday. the building? Yesterday. The bigger I, office. <laughs> I said, you want to help us find money? Let's, let's, let's yep. look for it. And if that's an opportunity, I'm going to jump right on it. And I know Jim would like to jump on it. So I'll take a look at it in more detail and uh, um, see what we can do. That would be awesome. Yeah. Is there any money out there to build a new building? Uh, I mean, probably under the same sort of premises, we'd have to try to get land and space and everything else. Um, one of the things, and I'm just going to throw this out here lightly, we don't have to linger on it too much, is if we ever entertain the idea of knocking down the salt shed and relocating the salt shed, because we do have some acreage in the back there, mm -hmm. we could consider building a new salt shed and a new garage for the trucks and the equipment and repurposing the garage because it used to, Sue, keep me honest here, that used to be like classroom space before it was converted. Uh, yeah, into that was garage. first grade. Yeah. So that is something that we could, if we took the, the trucks out and closed in the garage doors, could be repurposed as like a, a meeting room. Um, right. It would be a very, it would be much larger than the existing meeting room. But again, it's just a function of time, effort, and money to, to get it converted. Um, but if we were to build outright, build new, we'd have to do uh, one of a couple of things. We'd either have to knock down the township building and build in the same spot. And that has its own unique problems and complications, especially with people having an attachment to the building, it, it being semi-historic while not being, I don't think it's actually on the historic register, but it's not, um, it's not. Being, being of historical significance to the community. I don't know if we necessarily want to do that. Um, and if we didn't do that, we'd have to get land somewhere else, the funding to do that, and then the, the funding to, to put another building. And we'd have to essentially have the, all the operational costs of having two locations. Um, millions of dollars. Yeah, it would it would not be a small be effort. Money. Yeah, yeah. So especially if we can chase grants around, like even if it's little bits at a time. Do the windows get some some grants for the windows? Get some grants for drop ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, this that or the other thing. If we can if we can chip at it and have a good solid plan and and course of action to chip at it, it's a nice building. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's big, it, it's old, it's got character, um, and. To put it bluntly, we're not utilizing a lot of the capability that is there. Mm -hmm. So if we have ways that we can make that useful, mm -hmm. that's probably going to be the best way to approach it. Mm -hmm. you know, just even the office space, honestly, that space should be just for Sue. Yep. I mean, Sue, Sue just has, Sue needs more room in there. She should be able to have file cabinets in that particular space. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that, yeah, it's something to, to think about so yeah forward me that information i'll take a look at it i'll start doing that and uh we, we could have our dream uh list and and start looking at it and seeing again what we could do best for the community so sounds good to me and i know john had looked at um some information we need a place where we could consider it as an evacuation site as well because there's nothing in marion yep so just going back to the the thing that I touched on earlier is if we had the trucks not in the garage and we had that as finished space, and mm -hmm. especially if we had the second floor, the, the garage and the room right above it, they're both fairly large spaces that if we had accessibility to both of those, that would probably, if not all, would cover most of the criteria for what, what's needed for the evacuation space and like the emergency response stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is neither one of those spaces is really suitable for, for human occupancy right now. Mm -hmm. So... A lot of stuff to consider. Oh, yeah. No shortage of things to do. That's for yeah. sure. Okay. Uh, two items remain on the agenda. The last one is the Act 537. Um, I need to, to connect with Jim McCarthy around some of the, the last revisions around the, the memo to DEP. Um, I don't want to go overly detailed in what we're sending. The, the goal is to, to, to essentially pique their interest about talking to us. They're already willing to to talk to us and look at a preliminary plan. Um, we just got to get something in front of them so that they know what we're, we're wanting to talk about specifically and uh, get something set up with them. Uh, I believe they use Skype for their, their meetings, which I won't, won't get into my personal opinions of Skype meetings, but um, we'll, we'll set something up at really their, at their discretion and their, their convenience. Um, but I want to make sure that whatever we send to them, and I have a, a draft that I had been circulating, I'll make sure it goes out to you guys again around the, the key points that we want to revise in the plan, which is the, the, the refocusing on the cost-benefit analysis 
and some of the, the rewording so that it's uh, really focusing on not just one solution, but how we're going to address the problems. If we have a problem, we'll do this. If we don't have a problem, we're going to continue to do this. If we can, if we have this, this amount of failure, then we're going to consider this solution. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, I'd like to see us flesh out, and this is just largely commentary between the, the board here. I'd like to see us flesh out the alternative to going to Wolmelsdorf. If we have to go the public sewer route, having that a little more formed and, and detailed because uh, one, it creates an exit, a uh, barrier for exit if we're, we're going to Wolmelsdorf. And from what Andy had said that people are buying up capacity at Wolmelsdorf that um, mm -hmm. we may run into a situation years down the road when we actually, if we have to bite the bullet on this one where the capacity isn't there anymore and we're, we're hanging our hat on a plan that's no longer feasible. So I wanna make sure that what we have in is holistic and covers mm -hmm. any of the any of the situations that we would have rather than just essentially the one yeah it's very interesting because i think the the prior board just didn't consider that there may not be the availability of the units and that was that was very interesting what andy presented to us at the last meeting that it might not be there and this might be a reality that's sooner than later yeah and the, the thing that I, I go back to occasionally is like when you have a, a fire exit strategy for your house, you don't just have one way yeah. to get out because what if the fire's over there? It's the same thing with the Act 537. The way I'm, I'm approaching this is we have to plan for a number of different scenario. So I'll make sure that that gets out. Um, I need to do some messing around with the letter that we want to include with the on-lot management one, and then I'll hopefully circulate that this week. Uh, assuming my, my work schedule gives me enough time to do that. Um, and then we can hopefully get that out before the end of the year. Uh, just as a, a general side note, the way the ordinance is written, uh, the people that were in zone one, they had a bit of a grace period anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like anybody's going to be like under the gun to, to do this any more than, than mm -hmm. they would normally. So it would be like essentially zone one and zone two going next mm -hmm. year and then zone three the following year. Mm -hmm. So on, on that note, um, uh, as far as the SEO and alternate, yes. um, uh, can we have something, can we notify or somehow, I guess, have a process if our SEO is not able to go out and do their um, job, if they could somehow formally notify us about their availability, whether they go on vacation or whether it's an illness? I think they're supposed so, to. They're already supposed to. So, so that's a little bit of an issue this past week. So, um, uh, again, like in the letter that we revised, we listed SEO rather than listing it by person. Mm -hmm. So, um, so is there any formal process or can we send a letter to our current people letting them know that if they're that and to the alternate saying, you know, please be aware that if you're not available, can you give the township notice? Of course, you know, in the event of illness, we understand that, you know, we, they may not be able to give us adequate notice. Um, but if they're incapacitated or unavailable uh, to do with best diligence to let us know about their availability. Yeah, and I people don't have take vacations, so. Yeah, I don't have any problem with sending a letter okay. out asking for that. Um, okay. With it getting towards the end of the year, and I saw that was one of the things that was in the the scan packet from Sue is uh, we do have the, the opportunity to source different professional services, one of them being the SEO. Um, we did get a, a letter from LTL consultants. There's no rate sheet attached. I'd be very curious to see what the rate sheets are, but that is something that we could look if there's concerns around just the general, if nothing else, the general availability of Gary that we could look and see about either as a, a primary or as a, a different alternate SEO contracting with a, a separate firm. I love getting estimates. So um, Sue, if you know of people, I'd be more than happy to contact people um, in the next couple of weeks to get some more estimates. And then we could, again, go back to the drawing board, make a decision and, and go from there as far as who we're going to select for next year. Memory serves me. We had a number of firms, I think three or four at least last year that we had looked at me and Peter Wallace, mm -hmm. um, that we might have, if nothing else, I'm sure the rate sheets are different now, but we'd have mm -hmm. contact information, company name and phone number. Sure. So. I'll take a look at it. I'll make some phone calls. Okay. Last is the budget, the most fun, 
most fun item on the agenda. Um, so Irene and Dan ran out several reports for Streetlight, Liquid Fuels, and General Fund. Um, one of the things that I'm going to try and connect with uh, Irene this week is the, there are some automated things that we can do in QuickBooks that will automatically take what our, our actual use and projected use was and try and build a budget around 2021. Um, the good news is the preliminary, <laughs> preliminary review uh, that I did, which I added on the overview tab, if you guys are, are actively looking at the sheet, is we actually had good performance out of each one of the funds. Um, the street light fund, we actually took in more revenue than we had originally anticipated on the street light funds. Uh, liquid fuels, uh, we haven't used much out of liquid fuels, and we, we actually received more in turn back than we were originally Can I make anticipating. Comments about that? Yes. So for liquid fuels, that I had spoken with Mark Saunders. So apparently those monies should have been received in 2019 and they weren't. Okay. So so those are actually 2019 funds that we received ah. for this year. Okay. And so that was that that I don't know if it was a mix up on their ends. All I could say is I have the remittance sheet from March of 2020 for the sum received the total sum is what they anticipated okay. so that it's actually 2019 funds and I guess they weren't used so that's why there's a big ch chunk we could expect to receive about half of that for 2020 2021 year okay. so okay are they just yeah. expecting the because of everybody like driving less and everything else are they expecting the liquid fuels to be that much lower and, and well uh, um, usually I want to say the liquid fuels was 52, 530, I think is the, I, I think that was turned back. Yeah. Oh, turn back. Yeah, yeah. Turn back. Different. Um, yeah. oh, so I, I'm, I'm getting confused with, with numbers. So, um, okay. I had a, I had a thing yeah. last, at last month's meeting, I think our projected liquid fuels for next year is, or for, is 90,000. I was going to say, I want to say, yeah. I want to say 98, like 78, 90, yeah. right. 98 okay. is what was budgeted previously. So. Um, I want to say maybe maybe he said 104 or something like that, but okay, I well, guess I was I was confused as to it. what ones were from what. We can so. look at it, but that actually explains because we had a pretty big margin yeah. of, of difference there, but that that explains that one. Even yeah. that, withstanding, we didn't use a lot out of liquid fuels uh, simply because we had to push the road work out because of COVID. Yep. Um, we only spent about ten thousand dollars out of the liquid fuels fund, so we're we're in good shape to do a lot of road work next year. Of course, we didn't use a lot on the salt either. Yeah. yeah. That was helpful. Yeah. So we're, we're in great shape there. The general fund um, of the, of the budgeted revenue, we actually brought in uh, more than we had budgeted. We had shortcomings in a couple of categories, like with the, uh, uh, I want to say it was the real estate Real estate taxes current was lower than anticipated, but we did actually make back more in delinquent and interim than anticipated. Right. And part of that also is Berks County, and there has been some problems on their end. So um, again, like it, it's it's been very frustrating with some of the monies that we've received from them. So whether or not we're going to be receiving what what we would typically receive, I couldn't say their office has been in a little bit of a disarray. So we've been getting some monies here and there. And I was going to say they're, they're delayed, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Either so, way, ev even with that, yeah. we're still, we're still above, above water yeah. on that. Um, yeah, I heard your answer. Same thing with the, uh, the expenses. We're actually Not in good long. shape there. The only expense that we exceeded was the streetlights. And uh, as I was remarking to Sue, mm -hmm. we actually intentionally did that when we were setting the budget because we had a surplus in that fund. Yeah. Um, so really it just comes down to, we need to this week sit down in advance of Thursday night and look at the areas that we have, uh, what we budgeted, what we yeah. actually used. Um, the preliminary comb over that I did, everything looks pretty good. And I think if we set a similar budget, if not the same budget for next year, we'll be in, in excellent shape. Yeah, um, we, had, we had no increase in tax in uh, the millage. Mm -hmm. And I know I need to just um, find better some mathematical calculations as to where some of the numbers came from. Again, jumping into this with having some experience doing budgeting, but not to the extent where I have to rely on um, outside numbers. So. I know I need
need to look at that. I'm going to consult with PSATs and Dan has been absolutely wonderful sitting down with me and getting a lot of this stuff processed. So um, I guess the thing to, to keep note of is the tax money may be altered simply because of COVID. And I think I had put that in a comments in there. So again, that's, that's an iffy thing. We, we actually may be getting more in delinquent taxes um, because of people's inability to pay. So, and some numbers are fixed. So. Yeah, or to that point, because yeah. of the, the delays that Burks has been having, yeah, we may be getting the money. It may just not arrive until 2021. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Um, I guess another aside with the budget. So um, I, one item that not was not previously budgeted for was the emergency management coordinator. Now that we have one, I just threw in a, a number 1500 there. Um, when I talked to him, he's been uh, trying to work with the county. There's a, a pager that is missing that no one can seem to locate. And apparently someone from our township had signed for it. So we are responsible for replacing that. That might be in the two to 3,000. And, and no, excuse me, that's not gonna be two to $3,000 range. That We don't know the cost of that. And John is working with Brian Gottschall, the county level to see what we have to do to purchase, repurchase that. Um, the other thing is a radio so that we are on the same system as everyone else within the county. And that might be a two to $3,000 purchase. So the other thing that just to bring to everyone's attention and uh, Dan and I were looking at yesterday was snow removal. There's a large chunk of change both for wages as well as snow removal. We had an excess of salt from last year. So again, depending on what the weather is, that, that number is variable. Um, and, you know, Dan and I agree that we're going to leave the number in there. I'd rather be prepared than not prepared. Um, so, again, if there's like an, I don't want to say an excess of funds, if there's money there that's budgeted that we're not using, that's, that's a reason why it's in there. And I'm hoping to work with you and Dan and Jim, if you want to jump in on it, just to tweak the format so that numbers are clear to understand from a average person kind of perspective so that, you know, people say, well, why is this, why is that, et cetera, so that we know that. The other thing is, is uh, the categories. Um, Dan and I were actually working off of the uh, funds and the monies that were used on the QuickBooks program. There certainly are some other categories. I did combine them and I have all the paperwork that I worked with. So if you want to, we could have them side by side to make sure I didn't miss something in the budget um, and anticipating needs going forward. Okay. I want this clear and precise. And again, you know, you had to mention it to me. I didn't even realize, I, I know how to enter in the budget in QuickBooks, but I want to make sure I'm not missing any more tools available to me so that, again, this is an easier process going down the road and it's not, not reinventing the wheel. Yep, absolutely. So yeah. I'll, I will do my absolute best to try to get some evening time that, that yeah. fits your schedule before the, the Thursday sure. meeting. Um, I have to refresh myself on it, but I know you can build a budget off of uh, the prior year's budget and actuals, like the yeah. projected to the end of the year. Yeah. Um, so we just got to sit down and look at that. And then uh, essentially what you and Dan put together is go through line by line and say, okay, do we have a, an appropriate amount budgeted for mm -hmm. snow removal, for right. the communications bills to cover Comcast, right. for the electric, yeah. um, that we just have to make sure that we don't have anything known and then try to build in some, yeah, some buffer for the unknown. Was. Yeah, communications, there was a big jump there because of the website. Yep. That's where there was a big, a big jump there. We may actually want to put the website as its own category. Type. Yeah. 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 Um, simply because, yes, we had the, the cost over the past couple of years of setting up the website, but then mm -hmm. we will have potentially as when that original contract comes up, mm -hmm. we will still have an ongoing renewal for the hosting and, and maintenance of the site. Mm -hmm. um, and just for the purposes of keeping everything consistent, I would almost want to keep that separate from communications. Mm -hmm. And then maybe instead put things like the, the radio mm -hmm. in communications, or if we ever had a situation where we needed a, a township cell phone, yeah, that we'd, we'd have that in that communications bucket rather than the website. Yeah. So if, if you have the time, uh, it could go over the old materials, we could build it line by line so that it's, it's, it's clear to understand and uh, just go from there. And then I'll need some time with you just to review because of the um, uh, code of accounts with respect to each of those line items. So Dan and I were going through stuff yesterday and we realized some stuff was miscategorized. So we 
reassigned it as we were going through it. Again, it's just a learning process. So uh, just to like, Jim, are you there, Jim? I don't see yes, you, Jim. I am. Okay, so I, I, I don't have you up on my screen. So for each item that, that we enter in the computer, like any bills, any monies received, it, there's a specific number that's assigned to it. And um, some things, because there was a change of hands early, early in the year, some things I wasn't familiar with, some things that were done by other people. So as Dan and I were going through the materials, we're like, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong. So Peter, I'd need your assistance to just review that again, make sure things weren't miscategorized. It'll take some time, but again, making sure that we've got everything right where we need it to be and, and we could go forward and solidify what we're doing. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else on the budget? That was oh, like okay. 10 hours of my time. <laughs> well, it's, it's good. It's good. It's, uh, yeah. it's an excellent foundation for us to build next year's budget yeah. off of. So thank you and Dan for your hard work on that. Yeah, Dan is awesome. Thank you, Dan. Uh, You're Dan, welcome. Were you able to get that file that I emailed you? Yes. Okay. Phenomenal. I, I, okay. So like I said, based on anything else that we see in QuickBooks, uh, we have to check, obviously, the, the millage calculations and, yep. and things like that. But just looking at what we had this year compared to last year, a lot of the categories we were actually pretty substantially under in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we probably actually have the ability to not mess with the taxes. We wouldn't have to raise them. Um, we'd have to maybe have a, a serious conversation and crunch some numbers about if we could lower it, because I think we're at Oh, geez, are we at 2.0 or 2.1 no. millage? I... Hold on. I have, I have less than 2.0. 2.0. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, there was an extensive <clears throat> amount of discussion between me and Peter last year about that, and I couldn't remember if we ended up yeah. on 2.0 or 2.1, but um, I don't think we have to do anything. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of utility around lowering it because the when you, when you jump millage, it's not that much that the, the bottom line changes in taxes. You have to change the millage pretty substantially to, yeah. to eat up a, a number. Yeah. So I would think it would be better to leave it as is, not raise taxes. That's my initial knee jerk of that. And if we have some surplus, that gives us extra ability the following year. So if we say, oh, we, we managed to, to save $5,000, thing, we can reallocate that to something like building maintenance or buying supplies. Or <laughs> you name it. Um, yeah. I can also say like as much as, as, as we can, I, I can't say that there's waste, you know, oh, no. we are always so careful, always looking for the best prices. I mean, even I had to go buy paper the other day, what's the least expensive, you know, paper. Mm -hmm. We're checking things online. We're going to multiple stores. We try to keep local, but again, we're always looking for the best prices on any supplies that we have. So yeah. And just yeah. as a, a side note on that, any of the, the years that I've been involved in the budget stuff, we run pretty lean. We don't have yeah. a lot of extra surplus things yeah. or services or anything like that. We're, we're pretty close to the, the core things that you have to do. So there's really not a lot of wiggle room for cutting yeah. things out of the budget. Um, there might be ways that we can reduce or we can change. Uh, one of the things was like the, the LED bulbs that we put in yeah. the streetlights. Uh, I think at some point we're going to have to do that anyway, but the big big drive for that and the reason that we, we took that expenditure that year was it was going to save us money subsequent yeah. years and that was more of a less of a cutout and more of an efficiency thing so it's just it's uh, the time of year to look at it and say okay is there anything else that we can do differently that might save us some time effort and money uh, or likewise is there something that we know we need to address like going back two years we had that section on the roof that we had to fix because if we left it for much longer we would have had some serious problems um, so just things like that so as we approach Thursday's meeting kind of review this, look this over and think about that under that lens. Are there things that we need to do? Are there things that we can do different? Are there things that we uh, we can potentially not do anymore? And I don't think that the, the latter category, we're going to have any of those, but give it some thought anyway. Okay. okay. That's all of the agenda items. I don't have anything additional for comment. I covered any of the items I have for comment under the, the regular agenda items. Irene, do you have anything? Yeah, just uh, something, I guess, it, it, uh, there's a realtor sign at the beginning of Riverbend Estates that I've contacted the realtor about a couple of times. Uh, a couple of the residents here just asked me about it and if it could be removed. Um, it all does is advertise for the homes. There's no homes for sale. 
any homes that are for sale have an individual realty sign in front of them when they've gone up for sale and the road has been dedicated as a public road. So I've, I've contacted the realtor twice. Uh, they've informed me that the builder um, has promised to remove it. It's been a month. Um, any problems with me writing up a letter to both the uh, realtor as well as the builder asking them to remove it? So question for you, do they have, and we, we should be easy enough for us to check or have Jim check, is that sign placement on the plans? Because if it's not, it's not, a, it's not been an approved permanent okay. signage and we can ask them through a formal process like to remove yep. it. Okay, that would be great. So I'll shoot an email to Jim McCarthy and ask him because all it does is advertise for the um, developments and it's not, it, it's a realty sign. It's not a, any street signage. I will have Jim double check. Uh, but what the realtor has told me is that they've contacted the builder and asked the builder to remove it a couple of times and the builder just hasn't moved on it. So my suspicion is that it's just a realty sign and not part of the plan. But I'll have Jim McCarthy double check with it and maybe have, have him help me flex my muscles on that too. Yeah, let's say so. simply put, if we have the, the form, we have a formal process that if somebody right. has something like that in, rather than us like sending yeah. them a letter, we can actually say like, you need to do this. And if they don't do it, we'll have right. gone through the process where we have things at our disposal to correct it. Yeah, so. yeah, it's just, it's just odd. It, it, it's just, you know, advertisement for the properties which are now all privately owned, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah thank you. probably. Also probably just lost and forgotten on yeah on the well i don't think it's lost and forgotten i think it's just uh being ignored so i'll contact jim mccarthy then and um i'll get the um clear on that and as long as it's not part of the plan i then i can then ask him to contact the builder and have him remove it then okay thank you yeah, no problem jim anything for you no sir okay fantastic sue anything um, I just had the LTL letter, which letter which you covered, so I don't have anything else. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone. I'll make a, a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now ten thirty-eight a.m. I'll second that. Roll call: Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Thanks, thank everyone. you. Nice seeing everyone again. It's good, good seeing to everyone. See you. Stay safe, and we'll talk uh, on Thursday. Have a good weekend. Sort of. You too. Bye bye.